Modern science has discovered what they call the cosmological constant, that you know, going back all the way to the Big Bang, the universe appears to have been sort of fine-tuned, and that if mathematically anything was different to you know, the millionth, trillionth of a degree, that the entire universe would be different, that we might not be sitting here talking right now. How do you, how do you understand that as a, as a theory and going back to the beginning? There, there was a temptation to turn this into a, a, an anthropic principle, that the universe was fine-tuned to make you and me here. If it weren't so fine-tuned, we wouldn't be here to notice that we weren't here. <laughs> so it's a circular argument. Um, some people want to use this as an argument to prove the necessity of God. I think that misses the point. The fact that we exist at all asks the question, why is there something instead of nothing? And I'm not talking about a creation at the beginning of time. I'm talking about the fact that existence continues to exist and that there is not only this you know, cosmological constant or all the other fine structure constants that go into the, the anthropic principle, but even if there are an infinite number of multiverses with different ways of physics and some of them ending very quickly and some of them lasting forever and some of them having creatures with you know, 27 tentacles that, that think in totally different ways than we do. All of them are the creation of God. When Genesis was written, the author of Genesis said, look around, the world is this big plain with mountains around the edge and a dome on top. And bigger than that is the God who made it. When the Greeks realized that the world was round, bigger than that was the God who made it. When Kant and Herschel say that we're in a galaxy of stars with other galaxies, bigger than that is the God who made it. However you make the universe, God will be bigger. That's what it means to be infinite. Hmm, fascinating. Uh, you mentioned uh, the possibility of discovering a creature with you know, 20 mm -hmm. tentacles or something. Uh, because modern science has discovered the sheer size of the universe, uh, it's almost incomprehensible. It is incomprehensible. We cannot fathom how big it is. Uh, that gives rise to the possibility, the real possibility, that there mm -hmm. is life out there. How does the church prepare for the possibility <laughs> of that discovery? It's funny, in a way, the church always seems to be about one generation behind in its philosophy. And that's all right, because most philosophies don't last that long. The idea that we're alone and special is not traditional Christianity. It comes out of the Enlightenment. The Enlightenment was sort of the adolescence of human thought, where they had every idea that was simple, obvious, and wrong. But we know in our traditions that we are not the only creations of God. We have in Scripture the stars, the morning stars, singing for joy at their creation. We have in our traditions angels who are creatures made by God with a salvation history very different from ours. And I don't care if you want to say they're mythological or they're literal. The fact is they're there in our tradition. We're not afraid of other creatures. Because at the end of time, when we say that we are the image and likeness of God, it has nothing to say about how many tentacles we have. It's do we have the ability to know that we exist, that you exist, that God exists, and do we have the freedom to choose to love or not love? And that's the constant that creates what Aquinas would call the soul. That is what makes us creatures of God who can relate and love God. I'm not the only person in the universe. As a baby, I suddenly realized there are other babies around. I'm not the only adult in the universe, and people in North America are not the only people in the universe. Who's to say that people on Earth are not the only people? Um, I'm remind reminded of the old joke that either there are more intelligent creatures in the universe than us, or we are the most intelligent in the universe, and either way, it's a sobering thought. <laughs> Brother Consolmania, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.